Welcome to the Dave Leary Show. How is uh, how is your day going? Come on. My day is going well. Right on. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Um, I really appreciate it. I have I have no. Sadly, I'm very ignorant on the the subjects, and so. What I was hoping is that you wouldn't mind just telling us about yourself um, and the coalition and anything else that you want to bring in in terms of um, speaking on Black Lives Matter, because I, I don't want to go back to sleep. Uh, I've been woken up, right? I've been woken okay. up and I really don't want to remain ignorant. And I also want to help spread the, the message of what the coalition is all about and what, what's trying to be accomplished. Okay. And uh, you want me to start? You bet. If you don't mind. Okay. So my name first is uh, Kema Mansure. Um, I was the former president of the Sierra Leone community in Edmonton here, okay. and um, I'm also the local immigration partnership coordinator in Lloydminster. Oh, okay. I'm a trained nurse as well, but I actually move into working in community because of some of these things that is happening, helping and supporting immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a board member of uh, the uh, Africa Center uh, okay. in Edmonton that uh, caters for uh, the well-being and <clears throat> uh, for all Africans uh, mm. living in Alberta. It's located in Edmonton. I'm the community uh, uh, engagement chairperson for that uh, in that organization. I'm also, during this uh, episode, uh, we have the Black, uh, it is Blacks against, uh, uh, Black Coalition Against Racism, of mm -hmm. which uh, uh, I am one of the founding members of this group of uh, professionals that come together to look at uh, how we can move uh, forward uh, in changing some of the things that is happening to Blacks in, in Alberta generally. Mm -hmm. We have lawyers, we have professors from the U of A, uh, U of C, and uh, a few uh, other institutions, Grandma Kieran, mm -hmm. and we do have uh, uh, doctors, we have social workers, we have uh, community leaders, we have cool. diverse range of people who are, who forms the coalition and the, the black coalition is and it includes not only uh, people from African descent but we also have members from the Caribbean communities oh. who are some uh, uh, activists and have been doing things together uh, for a long time in terms of promoting uh, the the well-being and safety of blacks in mm -hmm. Alberta. So in a nutshell, that is kind of uh, an introduction. And, wow, uh, sir, you are things. so busy. <laughs> I, I how, am, many hats, I how many hats do you wear? Like, it sounds like you wear several hats. I do wear several hats. And in fact, I was uh, one of, I used to sit in the Committee for Public Engagement for the City of Edmonton. And uh, I was the founding chair of the Clearview Multicultural Center. So oh, wow. I have shown interest in uh, pushing the welfare of uh, uh, blacks and immigrants into mm -hmm. Canada, and sometimes the there are certain things that uh, uh, I don't see uh, people who are non-blacks uh, to be bad people. Mm -hmm. The only reason is sometimes it's ignorance. They don't yeah. understand certain things. They don't understand certain perspective, and that's why because of that they tend to follow a stereotype that has been there for quite some time mm. and social media have fed them a lot mm. enough uh news media social media new print media have fed people's minds even institutions like schools uh have fed so much into people's lives for decades and decades which have created a pattern of uh, understanding mm -hmm. uh, about uh, a particular group or set of people and that's why my role and work have always been to actually throw that light mm -hmm. and when i was um, uh, i became the local immigration partnership coordinator in lloydminster even i 
I form what is called uh, Connecting Us All Diversity and Inclusion Forum. Mm -hmm. I brought in indigenous people, the, the blanket exercise, and I mainstream Canadians, uh, non-blacks and mm -hmm. immigrants at a table. So we had a discussion wherein people are uh, telling their skills, talk about their skills, their potentials and what mm -hmm. they can contribute to the community. Yeah. Because all the time, what is seen is that as immigrants and as uh, Blacks, you, they look at us as needing uh, from the system rather than mm. contributing to the system. And because yeah. of that history, and I'll give you one thing probably that you don't know about, even me personally, uh, coming from Sierra Leone. When slavery was abolished in the U.S., there were a number of uh, uh, Blacks who fled, the Patriots who fled to Canada, and they were in Nova Scotia, the, black, the Blacks that are in Nova Scotia, Halifax. So mm -hmm. situations were not uh, conducive for them there at a, at a particular point in time. 1,500 of those uh, in, uh, Blacks were taken to my country, Sierra Leone, and the capital of my country is called Freetown because of these free oh. slaves that were taken to uh, my country. Okay. And so that's, that name has actually been the capital, the, the, uh, the name of the capital since uh, those times. And we have a history from Nova Scotia, the blacks in Nova Scotia to my country and the Maroons and from UK as well, we are taken to this because of this, the way my country is situated. So we have a connection and some of the challenges stems from slavery and all those things that uh, Blacks are being treated the way they are treated. So my goal had been to actually um, change the dialogue and change the perspective of uh, uh, non-Blacks to understand that uh, we are not only needing from the system, but we are also contributing immensely to the system. But chances are not given to us to do that. We are stonewalled in so many areas wherein we can actually do more as we want to do. Now, it's amazing. I, I honestly, I had no idea, obviously, that Freetown was named because of that. Uh, yeah. That is, that's amazing. And it's, it I, was a promise of freedom. So the people mm -hmm. who, in fact, they, when they came here, the land that was promised to them after the abolition of slave trade, and so they didn't get that uh, mm -hmm. when they came to Nova Scotia, and then they sent them. Uh, so Freetown was like the land of freedom. So any slaves who were even captured later, uh, a group of slaves were captured on uh, on, on sea, uh, heading to the Maroons, and they, these were after the Maroon War. They were diverted to my country because it was called the fr uh, the port of free uh, freedom, wherein people were taken. So there is a link between Nova, Black Nova Scotians and uh, my country, Freetown, uh, mm -hmm. which is the capital. And in fact, we have a, a, a whole tribe called the Creoles. Mm. The, the Creoles are, uh, uh, when they were brought, those uh, Blacks who are working in plantation, they mm. can speak proper, uh, fluently English, mm -hmm. and they did not know the African dialect anymore. Mm -hmm. So they were caught in between. So they speak broken, they speak in English, like you have the Haitian who speak uh, Creole, which is a, a broken French kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the same thing like uh, our own Creole is English Creole, but okay. it's broken English. And we can say words in Creole that actually exactly translated in, in English the same oh, okay. way. So these were the group of people who were taken from Nova Scotia, UK, mm. and taken to my country. And that's the history there. So coming back to black lives matter it is important there are so many areas where in in fact i did a presentation to city council in edmonton uh, about uh, what needs to change mm -hmm. uh, i know now we are focused on um, 
on uh, uh, police brutality or police ways they are doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that's not how I see. The police is just one branch of mm -hmm. the system. Yeah. And these are things that have gone for quite some time. If we don't change the other parts, it's just like you have a branch. Uh, if you mm. do farming, you will know if one part of the, the plant is infected, you cut that plant, uh, that branch. The other part may be because the, probably the problem is not from just that branch, it's from the roots. You know. The, if the root is infected, then the whole system is infected. So it's not yeah. just the police that has the problem, it's the whole mm. system that has the problem. There's discrimination and racism in all aspects of our lives mm -hmm. uh, here. So we just don't want to solve a police brutality kneeling on police. We need to mm. root out systemic racism yeah. and discrimination, the things that actually uh, prevent uh, mm -hmm. uh, Blacks to actually thrive and contribute uh, meaningfully mm -hmm. into our society. Um, you know, when we come to Canada, either as economic migrants or refugees mm -hmm. or any form, because there are differences in uh, how people migrate here even. Mm -hmm. So we have economic migrants, we have immigrants, but sometimes the people are lumped together. Mm -hmm. Economic migrants, these are sometimes professionals who come here because they have, they were brought in because of their skills and expertise mm -hmm. already. Some are students who came here, became a student and then transitioned to be part of the system. Mm -hmm. But overall, uh, the system does not dis distinguish between these groups of people. And, uh, and that creates a problem in how services are uh, actually given. Mm -hmm. And it takes more than five years for a black immigrant to settle. Mm -hmm. can, because, can you talk about that process? Uh, what, is, what, is the, what are the most uh, relevant concerns for, the, for immigrants when they do come? That takes five years. Uh, it's different uh, for okay. every every type of immi uh, immigrants, for example. Mm -hmm. And as I tell you, sometimes we have the refugee, we have economic migrants, which sometimes a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. And even with the uh, refugees, we have people who are already educated before they come mm -hmm. here. And but because they are coming from a, a refugee country, uh, they consider them, all of them, as probably don't know anything. They all need the same. No, I came to Canada, I think one week after I came to Canada, I started to work. I was working mm -hmm. in a, a, a factory. Some people, it will take them a few, few years because mm -hmm. if you are uprooted from a war country, uh, I came as a refugee, as I said, but even though I came as a refugee, there were some who were not educated, mm -hmm. and and I was. So that makes a difference for them to actually settle and integrate and compare to me, uh, because I can speak uh, English fluently mm -hmm. when I came, so I was able to get a job uh, one week, as I said, yeah. after I arrived in Canada. Uh, whilst there is a process for uh, a refugee who, who, who was uprooted from his own country and has never been to school, but because of mm -hmm. the safety of their lives, they are brought here. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they take a little bit longer time to actually integrate into the system. But majority of the people who are in Canada and Alberta uh, are mostly economic migrants and educated immigrants. And uh, we, we see them in a diverse from the Caribbean, from uh, Jamaica, from Nigeria, Ghana, all these other countries that are now war countries, uh, mm -hmm. uh, even from countries that uh, uh, are war countries. Uh, we have educated people that uh, come here and these people want to contribute to the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, it is delayed. I, I was a trained nurse. 
I, I went to grammar Cuban, uh, yeah. got educated as a nurse, but I faced racism and discrimination, even mm -hmm. with my patients. In fact, uh, I remember I'll give you a story at a time where wow. in, uh, I was working as a nurse. I was the nurse on the floor because before LPNs, licensed practical nurses mm -hmm. were given uh, more training to give uh, IM, intermuscular injection or IV uh, medication, only RNs will do that, registered nurses. Mm -hmm. And I had just graduated from grammar Q and I was practicing and I was the nurse on the floor. All that the other nurses have gone on breaks. Um, there was this uh, patient that I have whom I was, the LPN asked me to give the IV. And then I went in there to give the IV. And then he says, um, go get me a better nurse. Because they didn't consider me a better nurse. And uh, so I said, I'm the only nurse on the floor. I need to give you a medication. And she refused. And then I waited and then she buzzed the, 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 the call bell again. And then the LPN went in and said, oh, uh, the, the RN, I sent the RN to go give you a medication. So, oh, and then, so I told the charge nurse, she didn't want me to give the medication. And later, um, uh, she was told that I was the only one who is qualified at that time to give the medication. Mm -hmm. And then she reluctantly re allowed me to do that. Wow. So this was one. And the other thing that I faced was uh, uh, being black. It's double jeopardy. Being mm -hmm. black and being a male nurse was a, a, a serious block for me. Mm -hmm. It was a challenging. And I got into nursing because of what... Uh, Red Cross and Medicines and Frontier did to me. Mm -hmm. I came to this country as a refugee. I was shot on my neck, oh, wow. let entered here and came out here as a refugee. And wow. um, so I always wanted to give back to uh, people in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. And I decided to go into nursing. I walk in a group home first and then walk my way uh, up, went to nursing school, finished nursing mm -hmm. school. And I even got scholarship for being an exceptional. I have them hanging here, even yeah. Justin Lang scholarship from the province, uh, yeah. actually, uh, for exceptional, uh, being an exceptional student. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming to practice was a difficult thing for me. So I face challenges upon challenges, and that's why I switched to something different. Okay. And now that I'm working in the field where I'm not practicing my uh, nursing and to some extent, uh, though things are changing now, but in when it, it, it has been difficult, uh, it's mm -hmm. still difficult for a lot, especially being male and being in a particular field that is considered a predominant uh, women uh, profession in, in mm -hmm. those stereotypes still lingers on and it affects uh, a lot of us. So these are some of the challenges that it takes people to settle and integrate. Mm -hmm. And not everybody has the resilience like I did moving from mm -hmm. one profession to another. Mm -hmm. Sometimes somebody comes here, they have a PhD, they have a, a master's, they have a, a first degree and they are not able to get into a profession that they like. Uh, even though the system brought them, especially economic migrants, the system mm -hmm. brought them based on their qualifications. And when you come here now, they say you don't have the Canadian experience. And it takes, wow. people, takes people about five years to get, five, six years to get that they get frustrated. It causes, and that's what I told city council here in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. I told them, it, these are all things that create stress. Mm -hmm. It creates mental illness, depression. It creates, and some of these things lead to diabetes. It leads to, because of my medical knowledge, I know these things are how they can come together. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody have, is educated, have spent years, have even working for more than 
after they graduated, they work for more than 10, 15 years in their countries coming here, and yet still you're not able to navigate the system. And in fact, I have found that within the black community, a lot of us kind of over educated because mm -hmm. we have education coming, and then that education sometimes is not recognized one way or the other. And then we have to go back to school to do more. And we think it is the more education we have that we can beat the system. Unfortunately, no. No matter mm -hmm. how it is, it's the color of your skin that we, that actually is an impediment. And sometimes uh, I have to move to go to Lloydminster to work. And whereas mm -hmm. the system here ask me for support in so many areas mm -hmm. to support them, help them in the field, they won't employ me. Wherein I have even applied so many times, mm -hmm. they would not give me, but yet the person who they hire will actually seek my support and help. And sometimes they will give me a token uh, to go do a presentation so they can give me a honorarium for this, honorarium for mm -hmm. that. But to survive, we have to do that. Yeah. Because I have children and mm -hmm. uh, I have, see them uh, behind oh, me? Oh, yeah. Too, yeah. That too, I have two of my, my children. I have to take care of them. So mm -hmm. I will do some of those uh presentations and cultural competence and so many other things mm -hmm. on how to um uh, even approach certain things in the black community and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so these are some of the challenges that is uh, embedded in our systems that need to change mm -hmm. uh i think we have a systemic and i think this is incumbent on all canadians all albertans uh non uh, blacks to come together, understand the reality, the truth about mm -hmm. uh, racism and discrimination and how it's impacting. Uh, I have seen tons and tons again, wherein if you apply for loan, uh, you will get it at a, a, a good interest rate. Mm -hmm. But if I apply for loan, definitely, it will be different. My, they will give me, a, I will bring, produce a lot of documents to show that uh, uh, before they can give me the loan. And even when they give me that loan, they will, my interest rate will be in a, in, in a way totally not the same as yours. This is wow. practical. This is a practical wow. thing that uh, I have witnessed and others that I have worked with in, so this has been my goal mm -hmm. to promote uh, this kind of things. Yeah. And uh, to well, you're show blowing, that- Well, you're blowing my mind here. Like, I had no idea. What's the, what's the difference in, in interest rates? Do you have like any sort of average numbers or- Oh, yes. I, uh, I had no uh, idea. Let's say, let's say, for example, something, uh, they will give you an interest rate for maybe 2.5% uh, for mm -hmm. a black, person who wants to open a business and to get that same kind of loan, they will be asking for four to five percent uh, interest. So more than so double. Have, oh yes, more than double. And you, wow. I'll produce more documents than you'll produce more documents. The reason being, I'll have to bring my house, I'll have to bring other things, and sometimes I'll have to bring, and uh, sometimes they say, okay, well, as long as you you qualify for this yes it, it is uh, as on paper but when it comes to the the realities of things mm -hmm. no and we look at black organizations in terms of funding uh they will rather give uh, an organization that is uh headed who the executive director or the board is a uh, Caucasian or not non-black, they will mm -hmm. give them five million, two million, three million, but they will never go beyond uh, five hundred thousand to give to a black organization. That is really? the highest. They will, because they don't trust that we can manage money properly. So these oh. are some of the things. How would I help my people when I am stifled? I am. We are. 
we can only ask for the minimal stuff because we are not given the opportunity oh. to actually see how we can uh, we can we can we can move forward. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the challenges. Uh, even I have been talking to black people. We need to probably get a, a system wherein, if even we open our own credit union, mm -hmm. wherein we can, as if we bring all our monies to this uh, uh, credit union, and we will be able to start giving mm -hmm. loans to ourselves and empower ourselves because economic empowerment would be i think one of the biggest things that we mm -hmm. need to do amongst ourselves you know these are things that i preach a lot even to the black community as well sometimes uh, i see that we need to get involved so that other people we have to work harder mm -hmm. i tell my kids my son plays hockey yeah. my daughter figures kid but uh, even in academics i tell them I used to, when I'm in college or university, I had to work harder to prove. I wrote a paper a grammar, in grammar Q uh, forgot the, 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 the cause. Uh, my prof told me, was not expecting the fluency I wrote my paper. Mm -hmm. That was uh, a racist mark, uh, remark that touched me. So, and even during the time I was doing my nursing, you know, we have peer-to-peer -peer evaluations. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my peers who evaluated me said that uh, uh, maybe because English is my second language, that's why I don't participate much in classroom. Mm -hmm. And gave other comments. And I, I, I told the class that, uh, the context-based learning was different from the way I was educated. I have mm -hmm. my professor or my teacher standing in front of me and giving me lectures. Yeah. When I take notes, I go uh, do more research on my notes. The context-based learning is different. We are in everybody will go do your own research, come present mm -hmm. to the class or talking class. I was not used to it. I was new. This is my first year in a Canadian institution. And that doesn't mean I was not. I didn't know my material, mm -hmm. and uh, but that remark was, and I asked the question: Canada was colonized by the British. Mm -hmm. Sierra Leone was colonized by the British. We go to school in English language in my country, and we have seventeen other languages, and I can speak some of those. Whereas a Canadian will only speak English language. And I'm, when I was in an English classroom, I learned tenses, structures based on, because the language was a different way I have to learn it. So I know the structure and tenses and all those things uh, done a lot. So for my prof to say was well, surprised, and I, I, I confronted, I said, I was not happy about that. And mm -hmm. my colleague, I said, we, we are all colonized and even accent mm -hmm. is depending. Even in Alberta, yeah, we have some people who speaks differently mm -hmm. and we have the new fee who speaks yeah. their own way they speak. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so I think uh, even having an accent in a language is dependent mm -hmm. on the person. A, a Canadian speaks we know the difference between a Canadian and an American speaking. Mm -hmm. We know the difference between a uh, Canadian and a British person speaking. Mm -hmm. We know the difference between uh, Australian English and a Canadian. So everybody has accent depending mm -hmm. on how we, we look at things. But mm -hmm. these are some of the things that uh, we have uh, gotten problem with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we write uh, resumes. You'll be surprised. People will look at your resume. They see this guy is qualified. The moment you talk to them or they see you in person, everything changes because that's mm -hmm. not what they were expecting. They were expecting probably uh, somebody different other than me. 
and mm -hmm. uh, I have faced those challenges quite some time. So that's what I use now, some of my struggles, my challenges to help newer people to overcome some of those. Yeah. And I have been, that's why I have been in the field of uh, doing this for quite some time. And that's why I moved from nursing to even what I'm doing today, because mm -hmm. I'm helping all immigrants to understand. But at the same time, I'm also teaching them to understand this new culture. Mm -hmm. Because Canada is what is my home. I, yeah. when, when I came here, I have not gone to my country for quite some years. Mm -hmm. I went uh, uh, three years ago when my son passed away. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. Sir. Yes, and I was not able to bring my son to the system here as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went, uh, I've been longing to go back home. But when I went home, I was longing to come back home because Canada has become my home. And because Canada is my home, I need to invest. And I have been investing in my community, in volunteering in so many mm -hmm. areas. And um, because I tell immigrants, we need to do that. Because mm -hmm. the only way you can know and contribute to, excuse me, to your community is by being involved in your community. Yeah. You need, if you don't get involved in your community, you can't uh, know what is happening. And mm -hmm. if, if decisions are made, even including the political system, if you don't get involved, you don't participate, it will mm -hmm. affect you. And I know some of the challenges for some of uh, the immigrants, for example, people in my country, people who immigrated from my country, we went through war. And even some people's hands were chopped off during elections. Mm -hmm. So they, some people have never voted because of uh, politics is viewed differently. Mm -hmm. And it, our system doesn't know that. So we mm -hmm. need to educate people. If people are not participating, there is reason behind mm -hmm. some of these if they are not used to it. If yeah. we have accepted as Canadians to bring people here, it is should be our own to actually educate people. Mm -hmm. I say these are how things are happening, and but not dis being dismissive. This are reasons why some people don't participate because of their back history, mm -hmm. or they have never even because they view politics in a different way. But we need to educate them that uh, uh, politics in Canada uh, is vital because when you involve in your local uh, council things, things are going to change. If you are in a, a board or you are in a community uh, foundation, or, um, you'll make a change there. School boards, you would advocate for those things because you need to talk about the challenges. If you don't involve, people will decide for you. So it, that is another phase that I, we do, uh, I do sometimes. And the Black Coalition, uh, we are trying to make sure that uh, health equity, uh, I'm also with the Ribbon Roots Foundation as well, health equity, justice equity, with the, uh, all these other areas, the education system, and all of a sudden, all uh, black students uh, require special training in schools, even mm -hmm. though my children were born here. They yeah. are born here, and then you're gonna test them if they can speak English properly, and yeah. they should need a special, uh, language they are born here they mm -hmm. interact with uh, kids here they mm -hmm. from kinder to whatever level they are they have been they speak english fluently so why mm -hmm. have a special education system in our schools it's just for them to get mm -hmm. funding and then continue to put these kids in a way that uh, either they diagnose them mm -hmm. for certain things they they should not be diagnosed even so some of these challenges is uh, what uh, our group is trying to fight and yeah. it's not fight i you know when you use the word fight it's kind of combative but we are trying mm -hmm. to educate people and try to put our case across so that people can understand mm -hmm. uh, the challenges yeah I, I i am so grateful that you're here period like the 
the amount of work you're doing, um, it just sounds incredible. I, I, I'll be honest with you, like, as you're talking, I'm just, my mind is blown. Like, I, I can't even conceive of some of the difficulties and challenges that you've had to face, let alone other, other immigrants or refugees, people coming to Canada. Um, like, I, I mean, you probably told that story about when you were a nurse and that patient said no. You probably told that story a thousand times. Yeah. Um, and I, I, how does that feel, though, as a person? To, to have to go through that and then to almost have to justify your expertise when you're obviously an expert, right? Uh, and that, that is uh, the challenge we're in, you know, uh, that I, I was having. I say, well, you look at my grades at college, not even the written part. Uh, I finished with a GPA of uh, a very high GPA mm -hmm. uh, in the 90s. And... Um, uh, three point two point two point eight two point eight my GPA mm -hmm. almost three point oh and uh, and practical and I have my instructors my professors giving recommendations about my uh, because I view uh, my job as a nurse then as uh, as something personal. I give a holistic uh, approach into nursing because most people go to the nursing and then they have their eight hours or 12 hours, finish mm -hmm. that and then go. But I believe that uh, when you take the patient, you look at a patient, you ask questions, you, you connect with them, at least spending one, five, 10 minutes with that patient uh, asking how they slept. Uh, I'll give you another instance where I had a, a, a patient who was refusing a medication. Uh, it's an old lady who, as well again, who uh, was expecting his son to come visit. And uh, for some reason, the son didn't show up, didn't call. And it was devastated for her because she mm -hmm. was expecting the son to come visit. Mm -hmm. And she will refuse medication. And the nurses didn't understand what was it because they want just want the, med the lady to take the medication. I had the time to talk to her, hold her mm -hmm. hand, talk to her. And then she then told me why, what is going on, which mm -hmm. is beyond medication. And then I said, let me find out, go check the book, collect uh, his son's number, phone the son, and then the son told me what was the problem. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and I talked to her, and then she, the son had been trying to call him in the station, and I think uh, uh, was not able to get somebody at the front desk mm -hmm. at a particular time that uh, she, he was not able to make it. But the mom didn't know that. So I had to, I told the mom and then she was calmed down. She received mm -hmm. her medication and all these sort of things. And another time there was a patient who thought they had uh, some worms, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> tape worms or whatever was disturbing him in his stomach. And uh, without understanding, they've done all the tests and mm -hmm. he doesn't have anything. So what I did was to psychologically work with him and, and mm. you know, and that helped. So I have a special way of doing it. And for me to be denied, because one of the reasons that I went into nursing in the first place, it was to give back what was given. My life was given mm. back to me by my health professionals that I never knew. Mm. And I always wanted to contribute one way or the other to that. And since I was not able to do that, that's why I do a lot of community work to make sure I change the lives. I don't want to other immigrants, blacks, to go through what I I got I've gone through, or are not able to withstand some of the things that I can, and I can help them understand some of these things. But at the same time, make the system knows that uh, the way they are doing things is actually hurting us uh, more. It, to put somebody for somebody to resettle it takes five ten years for you to settle when would you start your life so now you get depression you have diabetes you have all that by the time you actually i was fortunate to the former government the ndp government 
uh, the Minister of Education had um, a consultation on anti-racism and then they had this uh, funding they were giving for anti-racism. Uh, so before they did that, the consultation, I was one of those who were consulted and mm -hmm. they invited me to the, the legislature. And one of the things um, I told the, the minister, Minister Hagen by then was that uh, you look at, uh, I have my certificate here, my diploma, my degree and all the stuff and all the hours. I said, my children will look at my wall and see all these qualifications. Mm -hmm. They know personally this guy is intelligent, mm -hmm. but yet this guy is not getting the job that he qualifies for. Rather, they are doing uh, a lab, uh, lab, labor job or job that does not befit their qualifications. Mm -hmm and uh, in a taxi driving or doing so many other things. I asked the minister, how would the children look to their parents as mentors and uh, role models mm -hmm. if the dad or the mom with all these qualifications can get a job commensurate to their education? Mm -hmm. What will inspire them to value education? Because you look to the people in front of you and you see the result of education and you value it. Why would they not be dropout? This is the one of the reasons why gets people into the system. I, we're not begging for you to employ me in a place mm -hmm. that I don't qualify. See my qualifications. If you know I qualify, give me the opportunity to be there. Mm -hmm. It inspires younger people who look up to me to actually work hard and mm -hmm. get the education to be in that position. They say, they will see mm -hmm. that as I have a chance, but when majority don't have the chance, they are doing other things rather than what they are and they go mm -hmm. to school. Oh, this doesn't work. They go again, go get another certificate, another degree, and that mm -hmm. doesn't work. So that's how they are accumulating debts and education debts they are not able to uh go through the system mm -hmm. now we talk about our kids what would it well they look for something that would bring them easy money mm -hmm. uh go to walk in in other areas that uh not education because they see education has not profited my mom my dad my uncle mm -hmm. my my cousin what has that done to them with all those education so if, and I, fortunately he was also the Minister of Education and he was in charge of this, and these were some other things. We need to break that circle. If we give the opportunity for blacks to be in certain positions and that inspires the rest of the younger one, the younger generation to work hard as, and because we all know working hard you can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. But if you're working, I have to walk. And my son asked me, why do I have to walk two, three times more than anybody else? Because I told, I, why would I have to tell my son that mm -hmm. for you to be good, even he's playing hockey, I say, you need to make sure you do more than others. And then he asked me the question, why do I have to do that? I said, because the, the, the color of your skin, if you don't excel and they have no reason to, to be biased against you, and then that's where it is because you don't try to give them any reason for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the same thing with uh, racial profiling and all the things. So I always say, I have to, we have to conform in a so much way and so much be careful that mm -hmm. it at the end leads us to, even though we are so much careful because you don't know when you'll be stopped. Mm -hmm. You don't know when they will ask you questions and then just assume because uh, one thing that uh, probably police sometimes don't know, when we, before we come here, we have an, an, 
ambition. Okay, I want to have this kind of car. Mm -hmm. I want to have this kind of house. People work so hard. They go to Fort McMurray. They work so many the, the two, three jobs just to get this because they have flashy people we are flashy mm. people and not because i have a mercedes or i have this kind of jeep mm -hmm. i'm dealing with drugs mm. it's because i'm working hard because i have dreamt of having it yeah. it's not because i'm doing drugs that's why i have it but once you're driving a particular kind of car they think you're doing drugs. So it's limits. Sometimes you look, you want to buy this, you are afraid to buy it because mm -hmm. this would be what they will they'll be pulling off you over all the time because mm -hmm. of the car you're driving. Or you mistakenly have uh, tinted somewhere, then boom. Even though yeah. this is a style that uh, you love, you like. Mm -hmm but you can't, you're limited. So these are some of the challenges that uh, we go through every day. I have yeah. to talk to my kids to be good at school, definitely. Oh, uh, this is the only thing that is gonna make you stand out if you do extra. I used to do extra all the time, but I don't want my kids who are born here to go through all that. But the system is not allowing me to do that because, Sometimes it's not about what you know. Mm -hmm. And you can have very good friends, but when the system is by selection and yeah. few people, for sure, few blacks have made it, few, mm -hmm. and that has involved so many. And sometimes that's what the system does. Again, take one or two people, mm -hmm. give them that opportunity, and then to make sure people think that they are doing something, but majority of us are suffering, are struggling, mm -hmm. and uh, it's challenging for our kids, and that is the big fear. Now, we bring brought our children, or some of them, majority of them are born here. They don't even know where we come from. Mm -hmm. They've not visited there. This is where our home is, mm -hmm. and yet home is not home enough for them. They have to be extra cautious they can't live the life that any other youth or young uh, child lives through without thinking two three boys even wearing a hoodie which is a normal thing everybody you're wearing one all universities have <laughs> one you know yeah. but as a black man wears a hoodie it's totally different perception mm -hmm. and understanding about uh, uh, who that individual is. It's connected mm -hmm. to something. Who is yeah. con a style of dress is automatically connected to something else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so these are some of the things. It is difficult. Wow. I, obviously, I have no idea what that's like because I, I've never experienced that. Um, I can't even imagine going to buy a car and having to choose a car you don't want maybe because it just simply won't get you pulled over. I, I have no idea what that's like. So I, I, I just want to thank you so much for your time, Kamo. Um, is, there, is there anything else you want to talk? I don't want to take up any more of your time because I can imagine how busy you are with all the hats that I imagine you have to carry around and put <laughs> on your head. Yeah, um, and I think uh, the, the only thing I think this is why even the movement with the black car uh, Black Coalition Against uh, Racism. It's mm -hmm. not just about the police kneeling on a uh, black mm -hmm. man's uh, neck or not just about, uh, yes, these are important, uh, the certain police acts that uh, you look at, uh, even let's take the Edmonton police, you look at the police commission. It's representative of the normal. Yeah. And then, but the people affected by the these are not even represented there. Mm -hmm. And they make decisions that affect our, our lives. And mm -hmm. we're not given the opportunity to, and that's what I think needs to change. We need to, it is incumbent on all Canadians, mm -hmm. non-white, non-black, uh, I mean, non-blacks, as well as people in particular position, to reflect, rethink about this is 
uh, for me, I know a lot. I have a lot of uh, non-black friends, and mm -hmm. uh, and I know their hearts. And uh, sometimes it's this not continual bombardment of uh, social media about even books that have been written years ago uh, have an impact on how the culture is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I was writing uh, a paper uh, when I was doing my philosophy about uh, equality or justice mm -hmm. uh, or what is right. And then uh, I know one student was talking about, you know, when majority say this is right, it's right. And I asked the question, when majority of white men chose to make slavery a right thing, was it the right thing? So no, it is not everything that majority people say is right, it's right. So we got to look at it and say, yes, slavery was there. It is majority of white people who decided that slavery was good for them because this would... That was what they wanted. So it yeah. was not right. It was never right, and it will never mm -hmm. be right. So, and that aspect of uh, always talking about uh, the system uh, mm -hmm. uh, is totally, uh, you know, uh, it's different. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I thank you for this opportunity for me to talk about some of these things. And I believe oh, you're that. Very uh, welcome. Uh, we need as individuals, as uh, people in position, people who are non-black to reflect and think. And when we talk about Black Lives Matter, it does not mean that all life doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All life always matters. Mm -hmm. uh, but a specific group of people, their mm -hmm. lives have never mattered. And that's what we're just asking that the rest of Canadians who are non-black to mm -hmm. just see. Not that we're against, uh, we don't value other lives. No, we value yeah. everybody's life. But yeah. our life has not been valued. Uh, mm -hmm. When you go to the hospital, they do tests. They ask you to do tests. Sometimes the doctors, even in our medical system, mm -hmm. the doctors will do tests to, uh, on a black person without telling them why they are doing those tests. Mm. Yeah. And you, uh, I'll give you a, a last uh, example. Mm. I was tested for, um, probably they may have tested me for HIV, which I have not checked my records yet, but they tested me for uh, sickle cell. Sickle mm. cell is a disease, is a, you move from, it's a hereditary disease. It's our normal cells, blood, red blood cells are round, mm -hmm. but this one is sickle and it's mostly affects blacks, black people. Mm -hmm. And it's affect the bones and it affect joints and it affects certain system in your body. And uh, I remember having a patient who is from Nigeria, had sickle cell and come into the hospital and usually crying for pain. And they think this guy is drug addict. They, they understand what sickle cell and what the pain that sickle cell caused. And not understanding that, th this guy was deprived of having the proper care because they don't understand that. And a test was done to me without me knowing. And it was in my record. My wife is a carrier of the sickle cell gene, meaning mm -hmm. our children there's a possibility if the both of us have been a carrier, our child would have that. Mm -hmm. uh, so at least for every child you have, there's a possibility you would have a child who is sick. Yeah. I told my wife, in fact, normally what we do, once one person has it, we try to make sure the other person doesn't mm -hmm. because you don't want to have a sick child. My wife asked me, I said, no, we don't have it in our family and all the stuff. She has. My daughter was sick. And I went to the hospital. They did all kind of tests. They can't find anything. Then they did sickle cell. She's a carrier. But you can't be a carrier by just one parent. You have to be have two parents who are carriers to make you a carrier. Okay. So they said, let's do a test for the whole family, for of us. Then they checked my record. They had done this test on me without telling me. 
Then the doctor came back, oh, you don't need to do this. We only need your son because your test is there. You are a carrier. Oh my goodness. My wife said, we nearly separated because my wife thought I knew and I hid that from her, which would have caused a separation or we would have got a sick child. These mm -hmm. tests are done to us without even telling us. And mm -hmm. You, you go to the hospital, you present yourself with a certain case, but because you are from a particular group of people, you are actually uh, delayed or screened further for things you didn't even ask them for. So mm -hmm. these are some of, even the medical system, this is even some of the problems that we are facing. So it is difficult. Uh, it's beyond, that's why I talk about when I was presenting to city council, it's not just about the police kneeling on somebody's neck. Mm -hmm. It's not about police brutality only. That is a reflection of systemic racism. Yeah, that's an extension so walk, of it, right? We need to work on uprooting that, whilst this immediate thing, we can stop them. Mm -hmm. And I told them, not that I don't hate the police. I need to be protected for, by the police. Mm -hmm. I want the police to continue. But there are other means wherein if me and my wife are having uh, certain issues or somebody is having uh, alcohol issues or mm -hmm. social issues, that's not a police business. We need to find places wherein other organizations that can handle some of this domestic and mild stuff that is not life-threatening mm -hmm. uh, and take that off the police. And one thing they forget too, a lot of immigrants coming here are coming from war-torn countries. Mm -hmm. They've seen the police and the military brutalize and kill them. And you come here, you see the police doing the same thing. What is the difference? Mm -hmm. If I have run away from a country where they were doing this to me and I come here again, I hear the police doing this to me again. What is left for me? It is difficult, it is challenging, and we, need, we all need to come on board to fight this thing. When we are all, we, can we are ready to contribute. And I've been contributing to the system. And the mm -hmm. other thing I talked about, even economy, it is even, better for our systems. Because if you employ me at my education level, meaning I'll have to pay, I'll get more money and I'll pay more taxes. But if you underpay me based on my, uh, my qualification and I can't meet, I, you force me to depend on the system. Some people like that because that's how they make money because people are dependent on the system like the prisons, the police, and other institutions like that. But an overall economy, because the more salary I get, the more taxes I pay to the system. I'm able to buy a house, I pay property tax. I'm able to buy a car, I'll buy insurance, I'll do this. So when we actually uplift the black community, we are actually uplifting the economy, rather mm -hmm. than have to stagnate on it. It's, yeah. It, it is uh, just obvious that we, we need to work more. And I thank you for this opportunity for me to express some of those things and uh, uh, conclude with that. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Kamal. I, I just, I'm honored by your presence and by your, your gift of time today and your education that you've given me. I'm not going to lie. I have a whole brain full of stuff now that I'm going to have to sort through all day, but I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Take care of yourself, sir.